Hello everyone and welcome back to Game Brigade. I'm Brian Greer and on this show we do reviews, previews, playthroughs, and have conversations about our favorite board games. So if you're new here, please consider joining the community by hitting that subscribe button. Okay, so first off, today, it's Tuesday, and I didn't do a Monday video. I'm sorry for that. The Kickstarter kickoff. Uh, which is generally games that I'm most excited about for this week in Kickstarter didn't go because there are no games that I'm really looking forward to this week, unfortunately. So I felt like it would be disingenuous to do a video on games that I'm just not really jiving or very much interested in. So today's video is going to be a little different, but I wanted to say something. If you, I'm sure that most of my community who watches this show uh, probably subscribes to many other board game content creators. There are a ton out there and uh, I wanted to do a shout out for one. So I wanna show you this guy, Shelf Clutter. I've subscribed to Shelf Clutter since he was very small and uh, he's growing very, very fast. Good for him, he deserves it. And he does Kickstarter updates uh, each week, in fact, uh, for every game that's coming out to Kickstarter and he has one of the best discords that you could find for late pledges, giveaway information, uh, what's coming to Kickstarter, everything. So if you do not already subscribe to Shelf Clutter, please send him a subscription because uh, the guy deserves it. He puts a ton of work, way more than what I do. So let's go back to, actually, I don't want to say that. I put a lot of work in this channel, but Shelf Clutter Adam, he puts a lot of work into. So what is today's show? What is this rambling show that I'm throwing together? Well, I figured I'd kind of talk about the hotness, I guess. I go to Board Game Geek pretty much daily. Um, being a content creator, I have to try to stay on top of like trending news or things that are happening. And I find that Board Game Geek to me has been like my best source other than my Discord community and other Discords that I'm part of. Um, so there were a few games that had popped up. One of them kind of took me by surprise. And so I figured why not we talk about them and then we can also do some little updates. Okay, so today's show. First off, I want to talk about Paleo. Paleo kind of came out of nowhere. Nowhere, but that's because Shut Up and Sit Down did a review coverage of it. And whenever Shut Up and Sit Down does it, you'll know that that game is going to be the next hotness. So if you are curious as to what this is, if this is a game that's popping up everywhere for you and you're like, what is Paleo? Why is everyone talking about this game? Uh, it's because Shut Up and Sit Down covered it. And I originally reading this description that they had here kind of remind, it talks about, oh, you're going to go to a deck and find card, you know, objectives and things could be happening. And I was like, oh, this sounds very much like, uh, dead of winter in terms of how they play it but after actually watching the shut up and sit down review totally different so i thought this description was actually pretty poorly written in terms of relaying what the game is like so this game has a pretty cool mechanic where you are going to have a deck of what is your journey or your path your life or whatever and you're going to draw three cards from that deck and you're going to select from those cards uh something and they're all face down like so you only see the backs of the cards uh, right here, some of those backs. So you're not quite sure what you're going to see uh, when you flip it. So you're going to take two of those cards, put them back in your deck, and then you're going to reveal the card that you you know you all do at the same time because it's a cooperative game, and you're going to see what you revealed. None of these cards are really showing what I'm talking about, which is kind of unfortunate. They need to show the cards. Okay, kind of like that. Uh, yeah, why aren't they? Sh they're showing all these really cool pictures. Like that's a really cool picture. But come on, I want to I want to show what I'm talking about here. Okay, so but the cards you flip, the back of the card are they're all different, relating to something you might encounter on that card. They're all ty encounter type cards, but they're all different. So you might have this one that had the flames on it. This kind of scary looking card uh, it could be a wild animal you can encounter or something bad. Uh, multiple different types of wild animals. So when you flip it, you will see something and you can encounter that in some way. After you've done that, you've all used your cards, you're gonna then do it again. You're gonna take all the cards that you discarded plus the cards that you played, you're gonna shuffle them up and you're gonna play again. And the idea is you've learned as you gain more skills, you gain more abilities, you kind of get an idea of stuff that you ran into that you weren't able to complete. Uh, you can then try and complete them again, but you might not be drawing the same cards because they have different, you know, you, you might have similar backed cards, but with different things on them. I thought it was an interesting idea. Uh, so pretty cool on that. 
and uh, it's rated pretty highly so you could probably find this in retail right now uh, that is paleo I wanted to talk about Stellaris as well. Obviously, I did some coverage for Stellaris, not coverage for them, but coverage about them for the channel. And uh, they're actually putting some renders up. This is this is new. This is all new stuff. So what I wanted to say is I was very critical of the campaign on my video, and I think it was justified, and I still think it's justified. I think Academy Gains has been very amateurish in terms of the way that they're handling pretty much every aspect of this campaign they did the live show where they were going to show the actual gameplay and it was one of the worst things i've ever watched in terms of trying to see what this game was and it stinks because actually the game from the bits and pieces that i was seeing happening look like there is something there so in case because in my video i really didn't talk about how the game plays so we can kind of talk about it now to kind of maybe help you guys along if this is a game you're interested in i still don't necessarily know how this galaxy is going to form in some way there are this board down here you're going to have four different boards and they are going to be the four x's of a 4x game i don't like that at all but it's what they're doing so you have exploit uh you have explore you have um exopolitics and you have one other one um and exopolitics is not part of the four x's that's something they're doing themselves and actually is up here in the corner you can see exploit uh, or that's explore whatever so what's going to happen on the turn everyone in simultaneous play which i do like this if twilight imperium had simultaneous play god that game would be so good because it can you can finally play it so in simultaneous play everyone's going to pick one of the four boards and you're going to perform an action from that board. So like explore, you're going to place a new tile. But the thing is, it's different is depending on some kind of element, you're either gonna place that tile adjacent to like your home planet or way over here towards the rim. But they didn't show that very well in the live stream at all. So I don't really know how that works and how this galaxy uh, builds. One of the cool things about Stellar's video game is what you get your starting world and you have, you know, you're going to be located somewhere in the galactic rim, but you can really explore in any direction. Obviously, they're not quite doing it that this way, but I really want to know how, how does this happen? Why is the board kind of coming over this direction or how does this interact well? So talking about the, you know, continuing here. So once you do one of these things, the explore or exploit, whatever, that board, you have to move to the side. And I think they flip it upside down to show that you have used that board. So coming into the next round, you have one of the three boards that you have to use. One of the remaining three boards, you know how to do an action from that. So everyone's going to be doing that. I personally, I like the simultaneous play and I like the action boards. I don't necessarily like having to choose one like everyone in a four round turn is going to have done the exact same actions at different points so what if i want to be like a really exploring race what if i really want to just explore and you know find and get as much territory maybe find some planets that i can uh, populate quicker while someone else wants to research tech earlier well i feel like the way they're doing it right now you're you're limited in terms of the amount of times you can do those actions now there are different actions on these boards again i don't know exactly what these specific things are because they haven't showed us very much but again there is a system here and as i was watching them play and you have these cards too for tech but as i was watching these cards or this game i was like i can see stellaris I can see it now that I've played a lot of the PC game. I can see it. I just want more. Um, and Academy Games is like, it's like you have a faucet and they've just like turned it a little bit and they're just dripping out information. And what I don't like is that they have conflicting information. You've got one head over here that'll say something. You've got another head over here that says something completely different and conflicting with this head says. And you're trying to figure out what is real, what's not real, and what's marketing speak. So I wanted to do an update video. Maybe this is it, I don't know. I wanted to do an update video. I actually did not plan for this video to be a rant about Solaris. It's just so frustrating because I want to like this game because I really like the PC game. And so I, it, my, my entire Discord actually the last week has been like talking about Stellaris. 
Um, and, I, and I wanted to do an update video and I still plan on maybe doing that closer to the end of the campaign where we can actually lay out everything and say, and then maybe I'll title that one, should you back? Because my, my current one is, is it worth backing? Maybe the new one would be, should you back it? Because now that we have all the information, is it worth backing? I think that may be, hey, who? Just brain triggered there. So that's Stellaris. That's on the hotness still. Obviously, it's number one and uh, continually booming. Okay, so the next game that we have here is Everdell The Complete Collection. I did a video on Everdell. It's still extremely hot. Uh, there's a few things that are happening right now in the board game community revolving around Everdell that I am very disappointed with the way people are responding. So obviously in my video, I mentioned that Everdell The Complete Collection is such a good value that I'm considering selling my current collection at some point to recoup the cost because I want to go all in on, on this and get the all in box plus this box and plus all the content because it's such a good deal. And as soon as this campaign went live on, uh, you know, YouTube, not YouTube sites, on Facebook sites and, and on other websites, we saw people listing their Everdell collection because they're doing the exact same thing. What I'm really disappointed in is the response from some community members who are attacking those people either with laughing emojis or just calling them out, telling, calling them predatorial or vultures. I'm like, this is really not a good representation of how our community should respond to people who are just trying to get something. There are people who are selling their Everdell collection. Yes, 150 get all the current games. That is still a great deal as it is. Yes, there's a Kickstarter going on, but you gotta wait a year and a half. You gotta pay shipping, so it's gonna be 200 plus dollars. So maybe, and maybe I don't want all the expansions. Maybe someone's fine with getting Everdell, the collector's editions all the way up through Belfair. That's still a great deal. So I just want to say to people, please stop attacking people who are listing their product, who are trying to do something with something they've invested heavily in, who have spent way more than $200 on their current copies. So they're taking a big hit as it is already selling their games that have held their value all the way up until the release of this Kickstarter. I just think it's not a good look. And, and every time I see those laughing emojis, I get really triggered because it's just not very nice and I don't care for it. The last thing I want to talk about is also kind of related to people selling stuff. Stardew Valley is very popular right now. This is a recent retail release and it's from obviously the board or not the board game, the video game of the same IP. I'm kind of digging all these uh, video game IPs converting their way to board games. We had a good conversation in the discord regarding that like why buy a board game when you can just play the video game and i my response was like there's something tactical about owning the game and also experiencing with friends that you don't normally get to experience maybe solo games with so personally i think it's a great thing and i want to see more of it but what i want to say for this if this is a game you're hunting down there are a lot of very mixed reviews on this game and from what i can gather it's very random with uh, a lot of mini type games and it's not very rewarding and it's almost you have to ask yourself at the end of the day was this fun like i did all these things but did i have fun i don't know so obviously i'm not going to play this but what i want to tell people is if you're hunting for it you can see here um the price history for this game people are 16 dollars. that's kind of low um this is where I'm seeing 140, 140, 170. That is very common right now because people are scalping this game. Again, I don't necessarily mind scalpers because it's just part of how things have been, but I really want to make sure people are aware of what they're buying because I think people are chasing the IP, expecting a really fun game, but it's one, very difficult, two, it's very random, and three, it's almost only, from what I gather, enjoyable for people who are diehard Stardew Valley fan. If that's you, then maybe great, but I'd probably wait for uh, another reprint or shipment because I would not be chasing these prices. I just think it's crazy. So that wraps up what I had for today's show. Kind of a little, um, man, I'm really screwing things up. Kind of a little, um, thing one to do i also wanted to show you guys something i picked this up today oh i got this in the mail and this that i got is another giveaway that i got for you guys 
I actually was expecting to get this in May because that's what the shipment told me on Amazon. So I was like, okay, we're probably gonna hit 4,000 subscribers. We'll do the uh, Bloodborne, or not the, the uh, Oathsworn giveaway. And then I wanna give something else. I don't know for what, but I wanted to kind of have something kind of planned. So I ordered this, but it arrived super fast. So in that box will be another giveaway um, for you guys. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. I do wanna remind you guys, uh, for all my giveaways, if you are a patron member, depending on the level you're at, you get bonus entries on all our giveaways. So if you're interested in potentially having more bonus entries to giveaways, you can check that out. We also have at a certain level where if you uh, would like to, I can send my review copies. Once I'm done with the game, like a prototype or review copy, and I don't need it anymore for my collection, I send those on to my patrons so that they can you know, play them and have fun with them because I can't have, I got way too many games right now. I can't hold everything. So that's for that. So, all right, well, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm not sure if this will be a mainstay thing. I've kind of wanted to implement a vlog type show into my channel of some sort where I kind of just talk about things and talk about what I'm noticing instead of having these like, like rigid, this is what the show is. I don't know. I'm just trying to still play around with things. And I want to have a conversation with you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to wrap this up. I will talk to you all very soon.